I mean, with um, the idea of a 7-8, which is just kind of give you some problems to do on your own at first and then do the lesson. But I think you guys will, will understand this pretty well. Uh, when we're subtracting mixed numbers, and mixed numbers is a whole number with a fraction, uh, sometimes you need to borrow. And so let's look at um, they, it, this, the... The first example here, they model it for you, and if that helps, you can you can look that over. Um, basically, you can see that they they take one of the holes and they convert it into single twelves, and then you can subtract the fractions. And so this is this is what I'm talking about here. Um, here was the problem. It's four and three twelfths, and we're subtracting one and eight twelfths. Okay. Well, four from or one from four, you guys could do that easy enough. That would be three. But can you subtract eight from eight from three? You can't. So here's what you have to do. You guys pay close attention if you don't remember how to do this. You have to borrow from the whole number. So we're going to borrow from the 4, and it becomes a 3. Now, uh, let me pull a stick here. Ms. Pavese, what's the common denominator in this problem that I'm, I'm doing? What's the common denominator? 12. 12, OK. So Ms. Pavese, 12 over 12, what does that equal? 1. 1, right, exactly. So we borrowed from the 4, and the 4 becomes a 3. And since um, the common denominator is 12, 12 over 12 equals 1, we're going to add 12, because remember we borrowed from the whole number. We're going to add 12 to the top. So this now becomes, what, 15 over 12. And we're subtracting 8 over 12. We couldn't do, we couldn't take 8 from 3, so we had to borrow. And we borrowed the value of 1, which would be 12 over 12. The denominators doesn't change. The bottom part, that's, this is important. I want you guys to understand that. When we borrow, the denominator stays the same. It's 12. That doesn't change. But what you would add was the 12 on top, and then you'd end up with, in this case, 15. Well, so now we can subtract. So 8 from 15, what's the answer? 7. 7, Seven twelfths. Now we can go ahead and do this. What's 1 from 3? Two. 2. There's your answer. And which is the same thing they got here. And like I said, they modeled it, talking about that. And you can sort of see what they did here. They had these bars, these red bars, representing 1, 2, 3, 4. And then here, you can see they have 1, 2, 3. But what did they do? They broke it down into 12 individual little parts and added that that these are the 12 little individual parts and added that to the three that was already there, that three. So then they ended up with 15. Then we could subtract the eight from the 15. Questions on that, anybody? Do you guys understand? Okay. I understand. All right. Those of you that, that are not facing the front, I mean, spin your chairs around if you want and put your book in your lap. It might be a little easier on your, your necks in the long run. Yeah, Ms. Jennings. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do uh, several more. Let's take a look at this one here. Sometimes you guys will see a problem like this. Okay, it's a whole number subtracting a mixed number. Well, you guys could do. You could take away two from six. That's four. Okay, a second first grader could probably do that. But we don't have a fraction here. All right. So what do we have to do? We're going to have to borrow from the whole number. I'm going to borrow 1, so it becomes 5. So what's the common denominator that we have here? It's 8. Well, 
What is 8 over 8 equal? Yeah. 1. That's what we borrowed, right? 1. So I'm just going to put 8 over 8 here. Now we can do it. What's 3 from 8? 3 from 8 is 5. 5, 8. And then 2 from 5 is? There's your answer. Okay. So actually when you have a problem, and you'll see some like that once in a while, where it's just a whole number, and you're subtracting a mixed number, just use the same common denominator with, or the same denominator that the, the fraction is, and it makes it really easy, and just borrow one. Let's do a couple more. So I'm looking at number five. All right, let me pull a stick here. Mr. Moyers, we've got six and three tenths, and we're subtracting one and four fifths. Well, first off, we need, just like if we were adding, we need to get a common denominator. Mr. Moyers, what would you use? Ten. Yeah, I would use 10 also. That makes the most sense. So Mr. Moyers, 10 goes into 10 how many times? And 1 times 3 is? So that stays the same. Mr. Moyers, 5 goes into 10 how many times? 2. 2. And 2 times 4 is? 8. 8. Okay. Now we've got a problem. Because remember, this is subtraction. This is what this section is about. It's is about subtracting mixed numbers. Mr. Moyers, can we subtract 8 from 3? No. no. We've got a problem. So what should we do, Miss Garen? Again, those of you that are not facing the screen, you take your chairs and turn them around. Yeah, exactly. The six becomes a five. So we've borrowed a whole one. Uh, Miss Garen, what's the common denominator we're using? Ten. ten. So ten over ten, we know that equals one. We borrowed one. So I'm just going to add 10 to the top. So that makes it 13 over 10, and we're subtracting 8 over 10. So Ms. Garen, what's 8 from 13? Five. Yeah, 5. So it becomes 5 tenths. The denominator, the bottom part, stays the same. 1 from 5, Ms. Garen, is what? 4. 4, okay. Now, at this point, I want you guys to start reducing fractions. What I mean by that is, if I had 8 over 16, what can that be reduced down to, Mr. Camisa? I'm looking for a number that goes into 8 and goes into 16 evenly. Anybody recognize what that is right off the top of their head, Mr. Button? Uh, uh, 2 over 4. 2 over 4, okay. That can be reduced even further, Ms. Jennings. 1 half. One half okay, because 8 is half of 16. So most of you should recognize 1 half. And it doesn't matter what form it is. If I wrote 50 over 100, what does that reduce down to? One half, okay? If I wrote um, 500 over 1,000, what's that reduced down to? One half, okay? If I wrote 10 over 20, what's that reduced down to? One half. All of you should recognize one half, okay? So I want you guys to start reducing the fraction. So here we have an answer of 4 and 5 tenths. What does that reduce down to? Four. Four and one half. Okay? So start reducing those fractions. And again, how you reduce a fraction, what if I had eight over 10? Think about a number that goes into eight and into 10 evenly. You can start small. It may take two or three steps, that's fine. Okay? Ms. Noble, what do you... Two. two. How many times does two go into eight? Four times. How many times does two go into ten? There you go. Eight-tenths reduces down to um, four-fifths. It's, it's like renaming it, but you're reducing it. All right? Let's do number six. So I gave you the answer to number five, which was four and one-half. I'll put it right there. Let's look at number six. So we have nine and one-third, 
and we're subtracting four and three quarters. Miss McGee, what's the common denominator? That's the first thing we almost always need to do. And you wouldn't need to do it, of course, if the denominators were the same, but in most of these problems, they're not. So Miss McGee, what's the common denominator for four and three? Twelve. Yeah, it'd be 12. Okay, Miss McGee, four goes into 12 how many times? Three times, right. And three times three is? Speak up. I thought you said something, sorry. What's three times three? Nine. Nine, good. Okay, Miss McGee, three goes into 12 how many times? Four times. Yep. Four times one is? Four. All right, nicely done. So now we have the same common denominator. Mr. Cosgrove, we have a problem. What is the problem? I mean, essentially, now I could rewrite this whole thing as 9 and 4 twelfths, and we're subtracting 4 and 9 twelfths. What's the problem here? Yeah. So what, what do we need to do? Not reduce. Borrow. Yeah, I've got to borrow. Borrow from what? Nine. Nine. Nine becomes what? Nine becomes what? Eight. Eight. So we borrowed one. The common denominator is 12. So 12 over 12, that equals one. Remember, the denominator, the bottom part stays the same. So I'm just going to add 12 to the top. So that becomes 16 over 12. And we're subtracting 9 over 12. All right, Mr. Cosgrove, what's 9 from 16? Or what's the difference between the two? Yep. 7 twelfths. And then 4 from 8 is 4. So the answer is 4 and 7 twelfths. 4 and 7 twelfths. So these are a little more complicated than adding mixed numbers because often you have to borrow. And just remember what you borrow is the value of the denominator whatever the denominator is, the common denominator that you came up with, that's what you're going to add to the top. Not to both of them, just to the top, just to the numerator. Okay, question, Mr. Gisa? Um, what if the problem is like number 11? Okay, let's look at number 11. I haven't looked at it yet, so it looks like number 11 here. It's 6 and 1 third, and we're subtracting 5 and 2 thirds. That's great. Well, good example. So first off, the, the denominators are the same. So that saves us having to get the same denominator. But can we subtract, Ms. Sugisa, since you asked, I'll pick on you. Can we subtract two from one? No. So we have to borrow. The six becomes what? Five, because we're borrowing one from the six. What's the, what's the common denominator? The common denominator is three. is three. Okay. So we borrowed one, and in this case, three over three equals one. So we just add, what, three to the top. So now it becomes four over three, and we're subtracting, whoops, we're subtracting two-thirds, or two over three. So Ms. Ogisa, what's two from four? Two. Two-thirds. Okay, now, we're done with the fraction part. That was easy because the denominator was the same. Now, Ms. Sugisa, we're subtracting 5 from 5. What's the answer? Zero. Zero. So what is the final answer for number 11? Two-thirds. Two Sometimes you won't have, as that example, you won't have a whole number. You'll just have a fraction left. Okay. How many understand this better than they did 20 minutes ago? 
That's most of you. That's good. Okay. So um, let me pull a stick here. I'm going to be generous. Miss Garen. So gosh, I've done. Oh no! Why did it? I don't understand what I did. Mr. Glazier, there's some things that you can click on. I think you can, down here, you might be able to click on those and it might bring it back. It's broken. No, that's not it. Can you draw on it, though? Well, no, I can't. Well, so I don't, I wish I understood what I did to make that happen. So, anyways, Miss Miss Garen, since I don't have my screen anymore, but I'm going to keep recording. Uh, is there one in what? Well, I'll see. I don't, I'm not even sure how long this has been recording. Yeah, we're past 15 minutes. So, um, oh, I could try pausing it, but I'm afraid I'll mess it up. I got to try pausing it on a short one. So, um, I th I can help you guys out if if you get stuck. Um, so, as far as the next page. Okay, look at page 23. Um, I want you guys to do, yeah, so 20, so I'm looking at 19, yes, uh, 20, yes. Now, um, look at number 20 here for a second. Number 20, the denominator is the same. It's 50, so it should be pretty easy to figure that one out. 21, yes, I want you to do that one. And if you have to look up the answer, that's fine. It's asking you, how is the purple quadrilateral and the green quadrilateral, how are they alike, and how are they different? Uh, 22... Um, well, he did not model that correct. The answer is no. Um, but you can just scratch out 22. I'm not going to worry about that one. 23, yes. 24, yes. All right, I'm going to end this. Bye. Bye.